And 21. Our News Extra program is next. And brought to you by First State Bank. Here's Kevin Dunn. Thank you, Dennis, and good morning, everyone. Our guests today are uh, Creighton's number one basketball fan, Howard Olson, and uh, Rhonda Pierce is here as well. But we're not going to talk about Creighton basketball, although that's what Howard would like to talk about, but we're going to talk about downtown development. How about them Blue Jays, huh? Oh, what a, what a year. They're doing pretty good. Yeah, this year. I got to see a game this year, so it was uh, pretty incredible at the Quest Center. Yeah, I bet it was. All right, now you, uh, we're going to let you uh, start with the history of this whole thing. This downtown development thing for Scotts Bluff has really, really gone well. It's progressed. Uh, there's uh, over two dozen businesses that are participating. How did, how did we get going on this thing? Well, this began originally as a chamber project with uh, some concern about the vacant buildings in Scotts Bluff and, and to some extent in Gearing as well. Uh, and so as a result of that, a task force was formed. Uh, Jim Holland and I were the co-chairs of that task force. We went to the cities. We asked uh, the cities for their participation. Uh, council persons from each city uh, joined the task force. Uh, the city of Scotts Bluff, of course, had already had their blighted study. Uh, Gehring did not, so uh, of course it, uh, that, that took a while. So uh, uh, we concentrated then on uh, Scotts Bluff. We then partnered with TCD uh, to get a, a, a planning grant from uh, DED and, and then ultimately an implementation grant. Uh, John Haney from TCD was very instrumental in helping us to begin with and, and when John left and went to North Platte we were fortunate enough that uh, uh, Rhonda picked up the ball and she's really moved it ahead. Uh, so uh, we're, we're tickled with uh, where we're at and I'm sure she'll fill you in on just where that is. Yeah. Uh, when you guys uh, got this committee going, this downtown re redevelopment committee going, I mean, there have been so many efforts to try to get something done downtown, and they all failed. Why is this one succeeding? Well, we talked about that at our first couple of meetings, and uh, <clears throat> those of us uh, involved uh, made a commitment at the time that, that we were not going to be another uh, effort that uh, was alongside the road. We were going to actually do something. And I, I just want to quickly mention that uh, those that have been particularly involved in the Scotts Bluff uh, uh, part of this thing are Annie Falk from the city, Brenda Darnell, Harlan Troop, uh, Irv Rushall, Jim Holland, uh, Judy Amu, Karen Anderson, and Susan Wiedemann, and, and of course Rhonda. Yeah, and uh, maybe partly that last name you mentioned might be part of the reason why it's it didn't. It didn't necessarily fail. Well, TCD uh, has certainly been a big part of this, and and uh, they've been instrumental in, in moving this project forward. Yeah. Okay, Rhonda. So we got um, 25. We got about what 25 businesses that have participated and are and are going to or are going to participate this summer, right? Right. So far, we have 25 applicants, and um, out of those, 12 have already completed their projects, which is fast and or fantastic to have that many done already. Um, I'm going to add to what Howard said. I think part of the reason that this has succeeded where others haven't is there's money involved that we're giving the business owners. So instead of just um, telling them here's what we think should be done, we're actually giving them up to half the project or half the project cost up to $10,000. So when you put money in their pocket and make it possible for them, that makes it a lot easier to swallow and do the work. So I think that's been a big um, promoting tool and the fact that it's a pretty simple application. We have businesses talking to other businesses now saying that you need to get involved and this isn't that hard and mm -hmm. it really doesn't have a lot of strings attached. So probably our biggest promoters right now are the other businesses that have already completed their projects. Yeah, and everybody wants the downtown to look better. And the whole idea, if I remember correctly, from, the, from what the consultant was suggesting was to get the downtown back to looking at, to use some history in the downtown and kind of get everybody's storefronts they can be unique but kind of have a central theme isn't it well um, and that's why we paid the uh, rent for the renderings and the drawings so that every building in the downtown had a drawing to show what it could look like and the consultant we used kind of took the buildings back to their original flavor I guess you'd say their original look mm -hmm. and so that that's been um, accomplished with several of the renovations um, we paid for a lot of signs windows um, some some concrete uh, the awnings, there's a lot of awnings going up, um, and I think 
you'll see they don't all look alike. I mean, there's some of them that look similar, but they all have a little bit different personality. Um, I think you're, we have a couple uh, LED signs, the rolling signs. The Midwest Theater is going to be putting up a, a new sign so they don't have to have somebody get out in the cold and, and physically put up those letters every time. And those, I think that's going to be going up here real soon. Yeah. So uh, some of these people, who, is, who, have, uh, who has done the most so far out of all these 25 people? I mean, some have been minor adjustments, others are... Fairly well, major adjustments. We've had some large, and we've had as small as $800, and we've had as much as um, 35000 25000 a couple projects at 25000 So um, they've been all over the place as far as the cost and how much people are wanting to put into it. Um, I think you'll see the building on the corner of um, 18th and Broadway. Um, it was, I'm not even sure what it was, next to the bakery in Bentley Donovan, that whole corner, the whole front's been redone. Mm -hmm. So new doors, new windows, I mean, that, that's really looking nice. So I think every project that I've seen, we had one case where um, the two businesses were side by side and um, they took down their awnings and one was going to put an awning up and the other one wasn't. And they called me after the, the one next door put theirs up and said, we have to do ours. Ours looks terrible now. So now they have an awning. and um, So I think some of that is, is really exciting to see is um, you, get, you get one next door and then the next one also wants to participate. Now I will say to be able to qualify all these communities that have applied and gotten this downtown revitalization money through the state had to be a certified economic development community. So there was a lot of work ahead of time that had to go into allowing these communities to even apply. So I think statewide there's only about 30 communities that can even apply for this funding. So and I was happy to hear we, we had a concern about how do we continue this and I just had a discussion with one of the state um, representatives there's a chance that they might put some additional funding in for the communities that have completed their projects and want to keep continuing a little bit so that's hopeful that maybe we'll be able to look at some additional funding down the road. And you still have some money left over from this initial effort right? Right and that's really why we're here is to promote the fact that we still have money available um, we will do some public projects, like um, some money for parking signs, like the public parking signs and the farmer's market area, but we have probably about another hundred to 120000 that we can give out to the businesses, which if that's an indicator of what we've done, you know, we could do 15 or 20 more businesses easily. We've already got about a third of the businesses that are in the study participating, so if we could get half of them or over half of them, that would be wonderful. So we need to need to get those other people moving along and I guess how do you do that Howard do you just uh, go back to them and say uh, you know this is a once in a lifetime chance here for you to get the facade in the front up to snuff here well we're hoping that uh, publicity like what we're doing here will generate some more interest but we've, uh, we're certainly uh, thinking that we'll go door to door and, and, and meet with some of the uh, property owners business owners personally and try to encourage them to, to participate. Yeah. Uh, Rhonda ought to tell, uh, tell you a little bit about Gehring. Yeah, yeah, because Gehring is uh, going to start up. Well, let's take a break and then we'll get to Gehring. Let's do this 30 second timeout. We'll be right back. Yeah, we got to do the break. The sponsor needs to get in there. So, so yeah. I'm glad Gehring's on board on this, because I was wondering. I think, that, I think they're coming along nicely. Yeah. I'd like to finish with uh, one of our difficult issues right now, and that's pigeons. Okay. <coughs> All right. We are back talking about downtown development, downtown revitalization. We've been talking about everything that's been going on in Scotts Bluff over the last, say, year and a half, and we'll go on this summer. And uh, Gearing is going to be involved in this in, as well, right? Correct. Um, we just, we've had two public meetings with Gearing. We had great turnouts for both of those. We had a lot of um, individual business owners that attended. Um, we have a meeting Thursday morning to um, set the parameters of what their actual um, district's going to be for the grant. And the grant is due on March 30th to the state office. Um, Rick Willis that was just hired my office and myself are working on that and trying to pound out the details of the grant so that we're actually we hope to submit it early so that there's no question that you know we wanted to be participating in that but March 30th is the deadline 
and then it sounds like it moves pretty quickly. Either the end of April or May, they come out and do the site visits and then decide who gets awarded. Again, this is the planning stage, so like Scott's Bluff, they had to do a planning grant first before you can do the implementation, so we caution people that, you know, don't start planning what you're going to do. Let's, let's have the consultant come in and look at what Gary needs to do as a whole. Yeah, and then after he's done, then the implementation goes, and, and it'll be real nice to have both Scott's Bluff and Gearing involved. Now, one of the things you wanted to mention before we sign off here is a problem that Scott's Bluff has, has got. And the Scott's Bluff Mayor Mining are, uh, appeared at our task force meeting, and he's charged uh, our task force with being the pigeon police. You know, we have all these nice awnings down, downtown now, and as you know, they're quite an issue with regard to pigeons. So we're going to start investigating uh, what to do and how to do, and if there's anyone out there who got some pearls of wisdom for us, uh, we'd sure like to hear from them. <laughs> so I, I don't know, you'd have to move them to another area and try to get them to go somewhere else other than downtown. That's kind of the idea, right? And we've had a couple of concepts. You know, we, we'd like to move them to heaven, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, good luck with the pigeon <coughs> the pigeon deal. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's that is something. I mean, you laugh about it, but it is. It could be a problem when you put all this work in it, and the pigeons mess it up. So we we did talk to the state about helping us pay for the pigeon removal, and that's really not part of the grant that they can cover. So we'll have to figure out other ways to do that. So okay, all right. Well, good luck, you guys, the rest of the way on uh, Scotts Bluff, and especially in Gearing. Looks like things are moving along well. It's uh, really been a great project. You guys are doing a good job. Thanks. Thank you very much, Kevin. All right, back to you, Dan.